Hi everyone, it's Ross again. Uh, today I am making a ice pond. So I want a, a difficult piece of terrain um, for Hoth basically, for Star Wars Legion, but other games are available. Uh, I mean, if I was playing Outlands for example, an excellent game. Uh, you know, an ice lake would be difficult terrain, so it would half your speed going over it. So, uh, that's what exactly what I'm going to make today. So, as per usual, a thick bit of MDF, I mean, ply board or extremely thick cardboard will do. Uh, thicker the better, to prevent warping, so your PVA glue will shrink and curl up the edges of any board. So, reasonably thick, reasonably durable, probably not going to bend. I say probably, you wait and see it bend on camera, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? So for this, there's several ways you can do floating bits of ice. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm not just going to do an edge all the way around and fill it with resin, uh, as cool as that would be, just an ice pond. I want cracked ice, um, as if, you know, you see in the films when the ice cracks and looks like mini icebergs, people are standing on it, it's tilting and rocking over. So that's what I'm planning for. So there's many ways you can actually do um, a sheet of ice that's cracked. So you can do it extremely thin, and there's several paints out there at the moment. I mean, GW do paints that crack. Brilliant, that's great. But I want real thick chunks of ice. So what I'm personally using, there's other ways of doing it, and you can use cork, cardboard, whatever you want, is this stuff. So this is foam core. Now it's just a little bit of leftover I've got after making some buildings. Excellent for making buildings. Really soft and easy to cut. I thought this would be great put down, making rough little pieces, like so. So I'm going to have my board all the way around. And then I'm going to have chunks of ice, roughly like this, all the way along. That's basically what I imagine, that's what I'm aiming for. And in between, obviously, the icy clear water below. So that's what you want to do first. You want to work out how you um, personally want to make the icy water below. You could paint it a series of blues and put PVA glues over the top, give it a bit of shine to it. You can use resins if you want to, clear water effects, things like that. Um, you know, from Vallejo, you know, brilliant products like that. Not a problem, but considering how much I'm actually going to see this stuff. I'm probably going to use PVA glue, plus with foam core, it might well react with some resins, things like that. So that's what I'm going to go for. Once again, it's going to be low budget, so that's what I'm aiming for. So anybody can make this terrain, anybody can make this terrain of any skill level. How I'm doing it, <laughs> you know. Um, so that's why I imagine. Uh, and with foam core, you will notice there's paper either side. So this stuff, all you have to do is get a little bit damp and the paper will peel off. So do that now, I will soak the foam core and I'll get right back to you and show you how to peel it off. Right, so you want to soak the foam core for a couple of minutes in some plain old water. And you'll notice the paper, as most paper does in water, is getting nice and soft. So you can try to peel it off, but if you're like me you have no nails. Being a mechanic, it's part of the trade, and you want to tear them off. You can try to get a corner and peel it off, but for me, it takes forever, as you can see. So what I'm going to try to do is just use some sandpaper, not too harsh. So this is a 180 grip, and just try to work it off. So you don't want to wear through the the core underneath you just want to take the paper off. Miniature paints are safe for this stuff, but raffle cans, anything like that, anything with chemicals, generally will melt foam core. So if you are gonna make a building with this stuff and you wanted to paint it up with a raffle can, then leave the paper on.
I suppose if you wanted to put it on the base and spray it, smack the camera, there you go. Um, if you wanted to spray it with a rattle can and it did melt a little bit, I suppose it would give a nice snow kind of effect, I guess, as it, it's slightly melted. As long as it's only slightly melted, I um, know you can't control the level of how much this stuff will melt. So it's probably not a good thing to do. So as you can imagine, put it down on a bit of cardboard or newspaper. This stuff's going to make a hell of a mess. Now, if you have fingernails, you can probably peel it off and it'll be fine. And you might just have to sand it a little bit. But for me, like I said, no nails. I just find it quicker. Just rubbing the paper off rather than peeling it off. Right, I will do the same, front and back. You don't need to see this for the next few minutes. You'll get bored easy. And I'll come back when it's all finished. Right, so your foam core should look like this now. So fairly soft, either side. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, that's why I'm using an off cut. Plus I'm tight, so any decent stuff I've got, I will keep for making buildings. But this stuff is so impressionable, still getting a bit off there now. Let's just a bit there now. This stuff is so impressionable, that you can lightly score this with a pencil and make some excellent brickwork which I have done before in the past, and I'm sure I'll do a tutorial in the future. Um, it's, it's fantastic stuff, and once you've made your brick pattern, for example, you can press into it and make a recessed brick, a crumbling brick, every now and again, for example. Uh, you know, this stuff is brilliant. Like I said, it's really impressionable, and you can sculpt a lot of things into it. So I've done uh, the old Celtic knots and things like that uh, in this stuff before and laid it in some Dungeons and Dragons scenery to make it look like a door, things like that. So, yeah, brilliant stuff. Always getting really well with it. So, we'll put that to one side. And then we need to work out what we're going to do with the base colour before sticking these on. So, I will make up some blues and paint this base, um, probably with an airbrush. I'll be back in a second, as if by magic, all painted up. Once you've finished painting your your basic piece, your base for all your snow, um, I've painted mine a series of different turquoises and blues, and then lightly airbrushed white around the edges to make it slightly darker in the middle. Most of this you won't see anyway, it's only the cracks through the ice. Um, but yeah, coat the whole thing, once you're happy with it, it's always best to put PVA glue over the thing. So, nice clean brush with this, a thin layer of PVA glue, once it's set you might want to put two on it. So this protects and it also gives a little bit of a sheen. So the water is obviously a liquid and it obviously all liquid is reflective. So it's going to have a little bit of a sheen to it. So you can spray it in gloss varnish if you want to, or you can use PVA glue. Choose your weapons wisely. I will use PVA glue, and I'll come back once it's all dry. Okay, so the wood filler I've put on the side is hardened now, and I've given it a light sanding. I still want it to be a bit ripply, a bit like snow. And don't worry too much what it's going to look like, because you're going to put your snow flop on top of that later on. And I've just sanded the bottom so it's nice and flat, so it's lovely on the table. So any wobbly edges that might be sticking out a bit prouder than others, just tidy up just a fraction. And now for the the mini icebergs, I suppose, the, the slabs of ice. So make sure your knife's incredibly sharp because you don't want to snag this stuff with a knife. And you don't want to cut it with a pair of scissors, because it will crush and squash. So I'll start cutting up some ice slabs. I'm ready to stick on, and I'll show you what I've done. Now it's always very important to cut on a cutting mat, not on your best table or anything. So when it comes to making the little icebergs, I'm going to make random shapes so it's literally going to be fully random. Like I said, make 
which is a nice sharp knife, so it should just pull apart, kind of like so. And I would like to, after a while, start matching some of these shapes, shapes up. So what I mean by that is, there's a curve here, so I want to make a curve like so. That's what I imagine. So I'm going to start gluing some of these pieces to here. So matching it up with a slight curve maybe, like that, followed by that, and you start making crazy paving. So that, my next piece might go here, so I'll cut a piece up and start sculpting it to fit. Uh, and with this, I'm not going to use super glue because the super glue probably will make, melt the core foam. So I will use my good old trusty household PVA glue. Nice and cheap, normally a pound for a pot. So I start sticking these down. Now you can always draw a pattern on your foam core sheet and then cut it out accordingly and put it in place. Uh, but for randomness, I actually cut pieces out and try to slot them in place. Might have taken a little bit longer, not much, um, but I think it looks more like crazy paving. This is the kind of look I want to go for. So once your PVA glue is dry, now remember PVA glue normally takes about 24 hours, then you can put your snow flock on the top. And your snow flock should overhang a little bit on the ice, covering up any bigger gaps. So you can use loads of different things with snow flock. You can use bicarbonate soda with PVA glue. You can actually buy snow flock. Uh, but I actually quite enjoy, if I can get the lighting right, Valhallen Blizzard from Games Workshop. Now this isn't the cheapest option. That's probably about four quid a pot. Um, so maybe if you wanted to buy in bulk something from maybe Woodland Scenics, other products obviously are um, companies are available, uh, but you can buy a lot more in bulk. Now this goes on quite wet, and when it dries, it looks fluffy, and that's really what I want. Uh, although you could use just regular old. This is what I got from um, a train supply. I can't remember the company now. I, I bought it years ago and put it in a tower container because the bag split and this stuff would go everywhere. So you can use that and use a little bit of PVA glue and mix it up. Now I have used that before in the past with pretty good effects. Uh, I mean, it goes off really, really hard. So use whatever you wish. But I will wait 24 hours at least and then I'll put the snow flock down. So this is the finished product. Once you put all the flock on here and around the edges, the winter fully goes off, should be quite hard and should be club safe. By club safe I mean I'm going to chuck this in cardboard boxes or plastic containers every Friday at my local club. It's going to get beaten around, it's going to get thrown about. Not intentionally, but it always gets dropped. Accidents happen, so fragile things will get broken. Sadly, that's part of it. But most of your hobby stuff stays with you at home. You know, it doesn't get thrown around by people you don't know. <laughs> they don't literally throw at each other, I'm just saying. Things do get bashed, it happens, things will break. Whereas dioramas generally stay in one place, for example. But this is modular, you can go anywhere you want. And with the PVA glue, it is pretty solid. So you can paint the, the water behind the ice that cracked up. Any shade of blue you like, um, you can even use resin, but just be very careful if you are using foam core, it could possibly melt if it does get hot. And you know, you can put more snow over, make it a bit more dense if you like, whatever, it's up to you. But this is how I've done it. It's, um, it's pretty quick, it's pretty easy, and it's just a bit of difficult terrain for your snow table. So I'm using it for a hoth table, um, some difficult terrain, slow some troops down. But yeah, that's how I make a cracked ice field, or ice pond, or whatever you want to use it as. Thank you very much for watching guys. 
Thank you very much for watching guys. Please hit the like button and uh, subscribe. If you want to see more of our content, we always have plenty of on the hobby desk. So painting tips, painting products, unboxing, how to make terrain, and even battle reports. At the moment, it's only 40k of battle reports, but coming soon, you lucky lucky people, it's going to be Legion and possibly some X-Wing and even maybe some AOS. Yeah, crazy, right? All right, thank you very much for watching. See you again.